I'm Helga from Helga's Pennsylvania Cooking. And uh, today's probably going to seem really too simple maybe, but it's actually how we make here, at least in this region, um, a simple lettuce salad with a mayo type dressing and hard boiled egg. And if you go to some of the um, older family diner type of places, uh, like Monster's Restaurant and Pack Sinus, you will still find this on their buffets on the weekends and as a side dish. Uh, some of the Mennonite uh, restaurants and stuff still serve it as well. So it's something a little bit um, PA Dutchy here for this area that uh, we all grew up with and like. And uh, I'm just going to show you how to make it quick. And it's a good use. I'm going to use the red beet eggs I made up, um, finish them out. You can use plain eggs, plain hard boiled eggs too if you like. No reason not to. You can use regular uh, store bought mayo too, but I'm going to use my homemade today. So I'm going to show you what goes into it and we'll get to it. And today is going to be a little bit longer. Um, when I get done with this salad, I'm going to talk about another salad and uh, share a couple notes. And then we're going to have a little fun as I go over um, a list of 25 of the grossest foods that younger people think uh, we ate growing up, at least in the older generations. A couple I agree with, but a lot of them I don't agree with. We'll see what you think. So uh, let's get to it. Things for this are pretty simple. Lettuce. Uh, about half a pound of bacon uh, done up that's nice and crispy. You can see it's nice falling apart. My hard boiled eggs. My, this is homemade mayo. Uh, two tablespoons of water, two tablespoons of vinegar, and I use the apple cider vinegar one beaten egg and a third cup of sugar and some salt and pepper and uh, that's it I'll show you how we put this dressing together Ooh, let's roll some of that beautiful bacon footage so on low heat I'm going to add my water and my egg Start getting that stirred around and add my vinegar and my sugar. And we're just going to stir this over low heat until it becomes thick. And when it becomes thick enough, we will remove it from the heat and let it cool. Maybe two minutes. And you can see, you can see we got thicker already. So this is what you want. See that nice consistency? And we're going to take it off the fire and let it cool. After we let it cool, then we're going to add our mayo. Finish it off. This is cooled. And I'm going to add my homemade mayo here. I'm going to mix this all in. Ooh. Then I'm going to add just a crack of salt because there will be some salt on the uh, bacon. Just a pinch of pepper here there and you can see how that looks and then come up here do this so we can mix it in okay And we'll do this, and we're going to give it a toss. Then we're going to crumble some of this bacon in. And then I'm going to add some of my beautiful 
beautiful red bead eggs. And this is just a simple, old-fashioned PA Dutch salad. If you want a little bit more, there's a little bit more. And uh, that's it. And it's pretty. Even with just regular hard-boiled eggs, it's pretty. But uh, you know what comes next? And then we're going to have some fun. Okay, time for the taste test. So this is what it looks like, all plated up. And uh, like I said, I know this seems really simple, but it's really good. Get some bacon. And some places don't even put the bacon in, but my God, everything's better with bacon. Oh man, you know, this is one of those, it's not fancy, but it's just one of those really good childhood comfort um, memory foods. Hmm. Hmm. That dressing is like a sweet and sour mayo dressing. It's really good. Like, it's so good, I'm just gonna. Eat the whole thing. Good. Mm. So, that's how I make my easy, simple PA Dutch salad, lettuce salad, with mayo dressing and hard boiled eggs. It's very simple. It's always a crowd pleaser. I mean, everybody likes it around here. Um, I don't really see it outside of this region that much because I think it really is more of a just a PA Dutch dish But I really enjoy it Another salad that uh, we used to have when I was growing up My dad used to like uh, my mom to make a salad where you put lettuce down And then you took a scoop of cottage cheese You put uh, sliced peaches around the cottage cheese and then a slice of cream cheese on top with a little Miracle Whip dressing and a dash of paprika. It might sound really weird to you guys, but I'm going to tell you, it's really, really good. And uh, that's just another good old childhood memory of a salad. It, that's like a 50s salad, but it was good. And it got some fruit and veggies in you too. So there was that. Then I'm going to confess I have another... Um, it's not even a salad. It's just a food combination. You know, we all have food combinations we like that are kind of weird. Well, this one, my mom always said, took the cake. Probably around eight or nine years old, I decided I really like this combination. And I got to tell you, I still do to this day. And that is garbanzo beans with cottage cheese, dill pickles, and a glass of orange juice. And I know that sounds probably really terrible, but I absolutely love it. She always said that if I wasn't for the fact that I was eight years old, she swore I'd be pregnant. <laughs> it's like one of those uh, crazy cravings that pregnant ladies have. But I've loved it my entire life, and I still eat it. So um, that's another just fun variation. So that was the simple salad. And uh, I'm going to go over a couple of pieces of mail that I got quick and then we're gonna have a little fun this is gonna be a little bit longer I might premiere this so that we can have some interactive fun with this but first the mail I got the one piece here a while back it was a lovely card and uh, it said I just recently discovered your videos on YouTube and I enjoy them especially the uh, can't cooking ones looking forward to uh, viewing more of your videos um, she, uh, her name is Teresa and she's from Claysville, PA and I always love when I get um, other PA folks that uh, like what I am making and doing because really for me that's validation I mean if I, if I live up to what they're used to um, 
I know I'm on the right track and that's kind of where this next letter is going to go. Um, this next letter I just received and this is from uh, Cynthia Winter and I've seen her comment several times. I know she's watched for a while and she sent me the most lovely letter today and uh, it says my name is Cynthia oh my goodness I love watching your videos so much fun to see what you will cook next I live alone and I'm retired so even though I'm a food addict I don't cook good stuff anymore then I came upon your great channel and I like it very much that you make everything homemade I grew up that way even string bean casserole didn't have mushroom soup either and it was delish so most of you know that I don't do the cream the canned mushroom soup and my tuna noodle casserole and, and and the green beans I don't do any of that uh, the show with your mother-in-law was so special my grandma made a sugar cookie and would do the same as you did except she filled hers with mincemeat be careful not to eat them top too hot they will burn your tongue like crazy I bet that stuff is like molten lava but I do want to thank you for filling my time with joy and wonderful memories um, amazing and don't ever stop and please do some canning videos I would love it thank you very very much um, notes like this, I still am old-fashioned and traditional, and notes like this mean a lot to me. Um, they really do. I didn't start my channel uh, to be popular or anything else. I felt it was a niche of special food culture to our region that isn't getting promoted much. And I wanted to be there, the old recipes and the church recipes, family recipes of the region for the younger generations. But uh, as you're going to see from this next letter I read to you, that it actually is even more than that. This letter, too, really made my day. And uh, it's from uh, Rosemary, and she's from upstate New York. And she says, Dear Helga, my name is Rosemary, and I want to thank you so much for your recipe for raisin filled cookies. My mother-in-law passed away three years ago, and she made these, but filled with mincemeat. They were my father-in-law's favorite, and I have spent years trying to find a dough recipe that did not come out like sand. This recipe is the bomb. I gave a batch to my father-in-law a few days ago, and he said they taste just like hers. It'll be a great uh, holiday this year. They say food is love, and recipes can keep loved ones in your hearts. Thanks again. So, um, those mean a lot to me, because I know that what I'm doing and putting out there is valuable to at least somebody besides me <laughs> and the family. So I uh, just want to share those notes and thank you very, very much. I love hearing from my subscribers. It means the world to me and it always gives me ideas of where to go next. I'm going to try and do more canning videos this year. We'll just see how time comes. Uh, June is going to be really busy. I plan on hitting YouTube in uh, Corbin, Kentucky this year again in June, beginning of June. And right after I get back, my mom's having double knee replacement surgery, and I'm going to be uh, busy between the two farms and helping her. And um, I want a can this year. I want to do my sauce this year. Um, I'm out. Maybe some more chill sauce and uh, some other stuff. So we'll see how it goes. Um, one day at a time. So now we're going to have a little fun. And we're going to see what you think about these 25 grossest foods. Okay, so tonight's a little different, doing a premiere, and I wanted to have a little fun with you all. Um, not doing a live stream, but I like the premiere because I can be interactive with you guys in the chat. So, this was a list of 25 tragically gross foods that the older generation won't let dry. And it was written by um, a younger person who had a big problem with some of the stuff that we grew up with, apparently. First on the list was ham salad. I love homemade ham salad. Ground ham with mayo and relish. Ah, slab of cheese sandwich. That's delicious. She had a problem with Mrs. Dash seasoning. And back, back in the old days, there weren't all the seasoning blends like you had now unless you made your own. So when everything went to low salt, heart friendly diets, I remember, oh my God, back as far as probably the 80s, you know, Mrs. Dash came out because it was salt-free. And, you know, well, a lot of the older people still use it. Then there was, let's see what the next one was. The next one was, 
oh, milk chicken. And basically that, that's plain white milk gravy. And uh, <laughs> she said they made, made it milk into a kind of gravy except without any seasonings whatsoever and they put it on chicken. Um, I won't even tell you the comment that she made, um, but you know, don't knock it till you try it. I honestly, God, don't think she had half of these foods that she knocked. She, then she went after meatloaf. I make a wonderful Merlot meatloaf, and I also make a really good venison meatloaf. They're not boring. They have spice. They have flavor. And uh, she says, there's a reason hipster food is so popular, you know. It looks gross and tastes bland. Well, at this point, you know, I, I think a hipster food. Anyhow. Then she went after mayonnaise-based salads with fruit, like um, broccoli salad, for example. Um, you know what? I like them, too. I don't care if she likes them or not. Um, then she had something to say about juice from concentrate, you know, like the, remember the frozen orange juice tubes of concentrate that you got? Well, the thing of it is, is she's young and she can't remember what it was like all those years ago. You know, when I was a kid, getting fresh fruit all year round, especially fresh citrus up here in the north, was not so easy. Um, and it wasn't readily available. And if it was, it was super expensive and it wasn't always really good. You know, it'd be bruised or not good quality. So if we wanted citrus during the winter, and my mom and dad were big about that because we worked out on the farm doing heavy stuff all winter and they wanted to keep us healthy and, you know, uh, sick free and get our vitamin C. And uh, so we had the uh, frozen concentrate orange juice and the other thing was, my parents also used to order um, uh, citrus from Hale's uh, Citrus Groves in Florida for fresh grapefruit, oranges, and stuff uh, that we would have through the winter. But, you know, part of that was you didn't have access to that stuff like you do today. You know, you go to supermarkets now, there is everything. It's amazing to me. Um, but you didn't have that when we were kids. This one I got to agree with her with, um, savory jello products. And she shows a picture of the, the classic jello mold with, um, this one actually has olives and tomatoes and yeah, that, I'm not on board with that one. I'll agree with her. That one's pretty, eh. Um, TV dinners. Well, TV dinners had a time and a place, but I've never been fond of those either. Um, I can understand why some people need them. Um, absolutely. And I know that they've changed a lot, but uh, they still carry a lot of preservatives in them. And really, if you can do without them, you're better off. Then she knocked buffets. Not all buffets are created equal. And if you get a couple, like a couple around here, really good home country cooking and high turnover for the couple hours that they have them, like at Mosser's, it's really good food. And I can't eat a whole lot. I mean, I eat my plate and I'm done. But the variety is just amazing. So, yeah, I'm going to still say I like buffets. Paper napkins. Why? What? Why? Why do you have to knock paper napkins? Uh, her, her reason for paper napkins, uh, that she doesn't like them, is she says they're less effective than paper towels and they're less eco-friendly than cloth napkins. Well, here's a news flash for you. They're also a heck of a lot cheaper. Paper towels are expensive. And, you know, washing uh, cloth napkins and stuff is great if you have the time. A lot of people don't have that time. Um, I do have cloth napkins and I use them sometimes, but I also use the cheap paper ones when I, when I need to. Then she was mad about plain toast. She says, make fun of us and, and our avocado toast all you want. But you know what stinks? Plain dry toast made from boring, boring white sandwich bread. Well, I'm just going to say this. And, you know, the older some people get, you can't quite have some of the same, thing, the same things that you had when you were younger. And sometimes those blander things suit a person's digestion better. We'll give her about 40 years and see how it sits with her. Oh. Then, then, 
Then she went after cornflakes. Cornflakes! I mean, how iconic are cornflakes? I love cornflakes. Cornflakes, smashed cornflakes, make great fried chicken coating. Does she not know this? Plus, I just like cornflakes. And she says, at least plain shredded wheat has texture and puffed rice has a snap, crackle, pop. This is just sadness. Well, you know what? You don't have to eat it. Oh, what was the next thing she went after? Oh, next thing she went after, meat and potatoes. Really? I mean, that's, that's, like, that's like going after apple pie. How un-American is that? She says, please, put something else on the plate. Really? I love meat and potatoes. Now this next one I, I do have to agree with her with. Um, next one was um, processed cheese products. We all know processed cheese isn't cheese. <laughs> it might be melty and stuff, but it's not cheese. And I like my real cheese. Grew up on a dairy farm. I like my real cheese. So I'll give her that one. Then she also went after um, uh, canned soups. And I agree with her on the canned soups. You guys know I don't use them. Um, they're high in sodium. And, uh, you know, I mean, they're convenient, but they don't have a lot of good stuff in them overall. So I make my own broths. I make my own soups. And you guys know this. Soda. Yep, I'll agree. Soda's no good either. Um, that's just a lot of sugar. And even on the stuff that's not supposed to have sugar and has the artificial stuff, it's still not good stuff for you. Um, this one, this one got me too. Italian food. Spaghetti and meatballs, garlic bread, that's not real Italian food. Well, yes and no. That might be a simple Italian food, but you tell the older Italian ladies around here that their spaghetti and homemade sauce and meatballs aren't Italian, and they will crack you right upside the head with a wooden spoon. So, you know, good luck with that. And you know, that's another thing, you know, Italy is a big country and the northern regions and the southern regions had vastly different cuisine. Uh, the southern regions have a lot more fish and stuff, the upper regions uh, have more vegetable based. But the point is, um, yeah, you can't say that's un-Italian. I mean, really? Bud Light. I think anybody that appreciates real beer knows that Bud Light isn't real beer. <laughs> Well, most light beers aren't real beer. There's beer, and then there's beer. So, anyway, that's my thoughts on that. Um, then, ketchup. She has a problem with ketchup. Really. Yep, she says, it's great with fries or on a burger, but uh, it shouldn't be used for anything else. Why? It can be used for a lot of things, and it depends on the ketchup. There are some really good organic and homemade spicy ketchups and stuff. She doesn't know what she's missing. Oh, then she went after the Vienna sausages. Those, eh, those, those are okay once in a while. It's sort of like the spam deal. You gotta have it every now and then. Is it good for you? Nah. But every now and then, once in a great while, it ain't gonna kill you. And who didn't have those when they were little? Then she went after tuna noodle casserole. Really? I make my own homemade tuna noodle casserole, no canned stuff, and uh, she says she called it appalling. Well, you know what? You don't have to eat it. A whole lot of other people like it. Then she went after vegetables, uh, boiled vegetables. I will agree with her on this one. Boiled vegetables are really, you, you take all the nutrients out of them, you take all the color out of them. When you're done, they're just sad. Um, so I like using frozen. Or if I do my own home canned vegetables, that's different because I process them fresh. There's no additives, there's no preservatives, and they tend to not be so sad because they're not over processed. But I like them, you know, steam from frozen or steamed, uh, grilled, baked, whatever. She went after butter mints. I'm not a big mint person, but you know, how, how can you be mad at butter mints? She said they're a cross between a dessert and a, and a breath mint, and that was just weird. I know a ton of people that love them, so my mom included. Then she went after 
she went, oh, margarine. I don't like, I don't like margarine either. I'm a butter person all the way. When you put something in a pan and it doesn't melt really, you know, it's probably not the best thing for you. So I'm not a margarine person. You don't have to use, you know, a little bit of do you of butter or anything else to give flavor or uh, a nonstick spray, but I don't do butter. Then she went after Watergate salad. I actually like Watergate salad. I know it's old fashioned, you know, I know, but some of those salads are still yummy. So she said, she said, uh, it's a con <laughs> concoction monster from health and it was as bad as the actual Watergate scandal. Nah, it wasn't that bad. This next one's gonna blow you away. Or at least it blew me away. How anybody could be mad about this, I'm totally at a loss. Turkey stuffing, filling, stuffing, whatever, you, whichever you want to call it. Um, she has a problem with it. She says it makes the turkey dry. I beg to differ. It absolutely does not if you make your filling properly. Furthermore, it makes the filling nice and moist and it keeps the bird nice and moist. Um, she also says, but it touches salmonella, salmonella and is basically like eating raw turkey juice. Um, no, not if you're roasting the bird properly. It's not. God. Does she live in a plastic bubble or what? Then Alestra. Well, Alestra, yeah, that's, that's not good stuff. And that's like the sweet and low stuff. That's not good stuff either. You're better off with real whole foods and a little bit of them than the fake stuff that actually will screw up your endocrine system and everything else. Uh, meat pâtés. This, this sort of made me laugh because uh, she'd probably faint if she ever actually saw Scrapple. I'm almost half tempted to send her some, but well, I wouldn't want the Scrapple to be wasted. Weenie sauce. <laughs> that made me laugh. Weenie, weenie sauce is the uh, grape jam uh, sauce that you uh, do with the like meatballs and stuff. It's actually really quite good. I like them. Makes the stuff candied. They're yummy. Then she didn't like the strawberry bonbons. Remember the strawberry candies that came wrapped in like the strawberry wrappers and they're hard on the outside and then they have the softer chewy um, strawberry centers. Yeah, she thinks they're horrible. She thinks they're horrible. So that was another one. Then, then she said it was terrible. Those summer sausage snack platters. You know, like the ones you get from Hickory Farms or, or uh, Fiji's or Swiss Colony. I got news for you. I like them. My whole family liked them. You send them to me, I'm not turning them away. I like them. Um, the fact that she doesn't, well, that's her problem. A lot of other people like them, as evidenced by the fact that they sell tons of them every year. I mean, it's not like they're sending you a fruitcake, for God's sakes. Curly parsley. How can you be mad about curly parsley? She says she likes the flat parsley better. Really? It's parsley. Who cares? Then she said, uh, oh, you're going to love this one. Cream cheese and bologna sandwiches. Now I'm here to tell you that a cream cheese and bologna sandwich, especially with the addition of dill pickle, is one of the finest sandwiches you can have. And actually one of our favorite hors d'oeuvres around here are, well, actually uh, DIY Dark Matter calls them pickle slices. We call them ham slices. And you take um, a layer of uh, deli ham and you spread cream cheese on it. I've actually featured this on my channel at one point. Back in the first year I was on, I showed them. Uh, the ham's, the uh, slice of ham, spread cream cheese on it, Philly of course, then uh, put a deli pickle, a dill deli pickle in it, roll it up, and then cut the slices. Oh my god, I can eat them all day long, but then you know I've already got a dill pickle problem. So anyhow, um, she, she really doesn't know what's good. I'm just, she really doesn't. She has a problem with Schwann's Foods. Schwann's Foods was a big thing when I was a kid. There were treats on that truck you couldn't get anywhere else, and the truck came to your house. I mean, we lived out in the country, out in the middle of nowhere. This was major, you know? This was the mid-70s. Ice cream truck comes to your house, plus it had other yummy stuff. It was a win. 
still is, you know, for people that can't get out, they're a little pricey, but some of their stuff is really good. Like some of their vegetables and stuff is good. And, uh, you know, for people like for a while when my dad couldn't get around well and stuff, it was, it helped him out a lot. So not going to knock it. Then she mentions aspic. I gotta, I gotta agree with her on that. The aspic is, you know, jello made with broth or stock and stuffed with vegetable things. It's jellied. And really, it's like eating cold jellied gravy. I never was into that. Yuck. Then she mentioned snack wells. And anybody from like the 80s and 90s, especially the 90s, if you remember the snack wells, they, the big fat-free diet craze was out. Everything was fat-free and they came out with the snack well so you could have your chocolate fat-free cookies. Yeah, I ate them. I was just as bad as everybody else. Um, and uh, yeah, they're super processed and they're not very good for you. And that's probably a thing that was better that goes away. Then she went after the iconic Wonder Bread. Yes, it was plain white bread, but it was iconic. And you know, those of us on the farm, we used Wonder Bread bags and other bread bags that we actually put on over our socks in our boots to make sure that we uh, kept dry feet when we were doing stuff out in the, uh, on the farm in the wintertime. Those bread bags, man, saved my feet I don't, for years. Then she went after Cool Whip. Well, you know, not everybody can have dairy and not everybody can have whipped cream on hand like that and Cool Whip freezes. So, you know, then there was a uh, molded liver paste. I hate liver. There's just, I have to agree with her on that one. There's just no way that that's going to be redeemable in my book, even for, <laughs> for, even for people who like it. Yeah, I don't like that. Instant mashed potatoes. But if you have a dehydrator, you can make your own uh, instant mashed potatoes. Uh, shave them, dry them in flakes, and bag them up. And there's nothing wrong with it. And she says, and why did you invent this? Well, you know what? It was a thing called the war. A lot of these foods and a lot of the stuff came out um, during wartime or right after the wartime. And stuff was scarce. You made do with what you had. People didn't have tons of money. Um, they got creative with what they had. And you made do with what you had. And after the Great Depression, when everybody, well, most everybody had nothing, it was a big deal. You know, I can sort of tell this person never was really hungry a day in their life or would appreciate the effort it took to keep everything going. She went after chains, uh, chain restaurants. For the most part, I got to agree with her. There's a couple good ones, but a lot of them are just mediocre in my book. Um, so, but then and in that sense, I'm a food snob because if I go out, I at least want to be as good as what I make and I really prefer it be better. <laughs> Of course, the further on I go, I'm not, I'm just a home cook, but the further I go, that's getting more difficult. Um, let's see, what, was, what else? We're almost to the end, guys. Oh, I had a laugh. She went after, she went after glazed carrots. I don't know why. She says, well, they're sweet enough. Not necessarily, you know, store carrots aren't like the ones you pull out of your garden that are really sweet from your own ground. You know, the ones you get from the store are not always sweet. They're mass, you know, mass produced or usually uh, harvested early and they're not the sweetest necessarily, especially if they get too big. Um, I love this one. She called them white people tacos. Yes, I understand that there is a difference in authentic tacos and American tacos. I get that, but you know what? I like both. Don't knock it. Let people be happy. And the last one. This next one is just taking all the fun away from kids that everywhere that grew up in the in the 60s and 70s and 80s and heck they still eat them. She went after Hostess Twinkies. Yes, we know they're not good for you, but they're fun food memory from our childhood. Leave it alone. She says, why process cake products when homemade ones are so much better? Yeah, homemade ones are better, but these were convenient. They came in snack packs. They sometimes went your lunches if you were really lucky and it was a treat. 
and it was just a totally different era. Um, you know, and homemade stuff, it, it's wonderful, but it doesn't have a long shelf life because it's not full of preservatives. That's a good thing, but when you're trying to make stuff ahead and have stuff to go for your kids' lunches and everything else, that made things a little bit harder. So that was her list of, of uh, 25 gross foods that us older folks shouldn't be hanging on to. You know, I don't go after the younger folks for some of their stuff. Just leave us alone. Let us be happy. You know, someday they're going to be old too. See how they like it when they take away their avocado toast. So, that was just some fun I wanted to have with you. Um, <laughs> I know it's unusual. I actually want to do uh, a stream here one of these days and talk to you about uh, actually what we call vintage foods and some old old time hacks that are still purposeful in uh, your kitchen. Stuff that I still do. Um, they're just nice hacks that help you out. And if you're interested in that, let me know. So that was it for today. A little bit longer than normal. But uh, you got to see um, a traditional salad from around here and a couple others and uh, had some food fun. So join me next time. Like, subscribe, and join me next time here in Helgas, Pennsylvania Cooking.